Hello everybody, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and more news out from GDC 2018, and that is that CryEngine 5.5 Preview has just been released. Now, CryEngine has had a bit of a storied history. It's long been known as one of the highest graphic fidelity uh, game engines ever made. It's been used for making such games as uh, MechWarrior Online, Rise, Son of Rome, Crytek, all the various different, or Crisis, uh, all the various different iterations of Crisis. Um, and all of the games made with CryEngine have been known for incredible graphics. However, on the other hand of the things, CryEngine has had a bit of a kick to the teeth lately. Crytek, the company behind it, has had some financial difficulties. Um, they now have a competitor in their own source code in the form of Lumberyard, which is a fork of an earlier version of CryEngine. Um, and, and so on and so forth. So they're doing a bit of an uphill battle. Now, one of the things they had done is they had implemented a new uh, pricing model, which really, in all honesty, was never really that viable. Basically, they were going donation-based. So if you use CryEngine and you wanted to donate money, that was how you licensed it. And, you know, it's great from the end developer, but realistically, you can't pay developers out of a donation-based model with a huge team like um, what's behind the Crisis Engine or the, the CryEngine engine at Crytek. So... You know, that had to change, and frankly, it just did. With the new release of 5.5, there is a new licensing scheme behind the Cry Engine, um, engine and that is a 5% royalty based model. So basically, 5% of your earnings go to Cry Engine for whatever game you made, or Crytek for whatever game you made after the first $5,000 in revenue raised. So that is one of the major new announcements for this. Now, what they've done is if you're using Cry Engine 5.0 to 5.4, the, you know, four previous point versions, um, you can still get grandfathered in under the old, old license. Unfortunately, you're now stuck at 5.4. So if you want to move on to 5.5, you now need to use this new royalty-based license. Um, it's pretty much in line, more or less, with what Unreal Engine is doing right now. And truth be told, for like the long-term viability of CryEngine as a product, it's a move they had to make. You know, like, you were just weren't going to make money or survive as a company under this system that they went with before. And I think they discovered that pretty quickly. Um, one of the things about the 5.5 release, however, is you can now get full source code for the sandbox editor. So that is new. And if you're a 5.0 or a, to 5.4 developer and you want access to that uh, source code, well, you're under the new royalty scheme. So that is that. Now, what have we got in terms of new features here? Well, it's a mixed bag. So basically, we've got some, um, there's a lot of talk about basically earning, learning materials for getting people up to speed on CryEngine. And this is definitely an area where they could use some help. Now, the nice thing is with CryEngine, they have made the installation process so much smoother. So I got to really applaud them on that. It is a heck of a lot easier to get started with CryEngine, for example, than it is with Lumberyard. It's um, pure. Um, but uh, they're, they're going further basically in the documentation side of things and they need to, frankly, the, the documentation experience isn't great for new developers. And one of the things they've done is they've basically created a Flappy Birds clone uh, called Flappy Boyd. Uh, I will show you that in a second. It is on their marketplace. You can go ahead and download it. It's also got a PDF guide, basically walks you through creating a game from scratch. Um, and obviously assets you need, the levels, etc. And they're also coming up with a video series that goes along with that that is not quite available yet. On top of that, they have done some other things. SVOI, SVOGI, their uh, global illumination system, is now completely offline. Um, I think before you used to have... I'm actually not sure how that changes things, to be honest. Uh, train system, uh, new features and enhancements vastly improved the train system, including the ability to weight and blend multiple materials, more detailed height maps, and more. A new level format that is future-proof for um, collaborative editing and version control systems. Um, I don't think anything major has changed yet. This is something building towards the future. Uh, the sandbox UI, their level editor. Um, of course, now you've got access to the source code. On top of that, uh, Users, new upgrades and tweaks to improve workflow, blah, blah, blah. Improvements include new drop down within tabs. So you can see all the windows open within the dock, allowing you to nest everything inside the side pane and keeping you free to dev uh, completely in the viewport. You can also control the distance of your helpers within the viewport. Control click the visibility icon to hide all. You will also get to your item quickly and then jump back to the full scene if it is a complex collection of entities. On top of on speaking of entities, uh, the entity collection has new and legacy components are integrated into new entity system. This includes rain and water ripple entities. A new VR camera has been added in, and 
interactive component makes setting up VR easier. Uh, C Sharp has been expanded so you can now create C Sharp assets directly in the asset browsers uh, with Visual Studio instances, debugging through the ID and more, which coincidentally I got an error when I tried this. Uh, character proxies, FBI animation import feature now allows for character proxies in the character tool viewport and is interchangeable with the production environment for seamless editing and versioning. Uh, plugin platforms, uh, brand new game platform plugin allows for easy access to common distribution platform and tr data transfer protocols. This includes Steamworks and PSN API functions like matchmaking, leaderboards, and achievements, and a user uh, and Unity migration guide for basically if you're coming over from Unity and you want to get up to speed on working with CryEngine, there is now a guide available. And of course, on top of that, there is a bunch of fixes and changes and features like that behind the scenes, smaller things, incremental improvements, the like. Now, here here is the new asset uh, for, for learning things. I've got it loaded in the editor behind us. So basically, you can go ahead and download it on the store. You may notice that the initial ratings are not great, and I will explain why that is in just a second. Um, but that is it. Go ahead, you can download it here. Uh, you extract it out onto your disk, and then the process of getting this thing up and running is convoluted. So for a beginner of asset, it comes with this nice PDF guide, uh, basically, what are we at? 85 pages, basically walking you from beginning to end of creating a game, which is a great, great thing. And then we have the setup process. And the setup process is, you know, again, I, um, Crytek, I applaud you guys on making the installation and creating a new project process so much cleaner. Uh, but you really got to clean this up. This is terrible. Just outright stupid. Basically, you got to go to the marketplace, download the game SDK. Uh, the game SDK is about four, four and a half gigabytes. You have to then go to the Explorer, do an import of that. No, sorry. You have to manually copy the new projects over into a subdirectory of the game SDK. And this is actually a subdirectory of the new assets that you've just had to download. So basically, you have to go and unzip them, go down, find the subfolder, copy it into a subdirectory of the game SDK project. Then you go ahead and import that into the local Loader, then you load that up and then you import in the level that you just incremented. It's, you, you gotta find a better way or just make a script that makes us a one-click process because this is people just starting out with your editor and you just created a 30-step installation guide. It's just insane to me. So anyways, I went through this process, eventually got it all going. Here we are now in, I have the game SDK loaded as my outside project. This is the new editor. It is getting cleaner. It is getting much more straightforward. A lot of the old stuff is going away. It handles multiple resolutions well. I haven't really had any issues with it that way. Uh, so kudos to them. They've made nice progress on streamlining their editor. Uh, it is definitely getting more user friendly. Although again, sometimes this, this game is a level system that they're built around. It's still clunky. Uh, Lumberyard inherited it too. Um, you basically have to create a complete new game for your levels, for your projects, and it all opens up together and so on and so forth. So that's why I had to copy this folder into under the level structure. But this is the new game system they set up. I'll go ahead and open it up and you can see the end results. So here we go. This is the new game. I could go ahead and play it. Uh, I will do so. Let me just turn down my volume a bit so I don't kill you all. Let me turn down my volume a lot, in fact. So we can go ahead and play here. And then there's the game. I wasn't really ready for that. All right, let's, uh, let's hope that starts again. Apparently it doesn't. If you've played Flappy Birds, you know what it's about. I am apparently appalling at this, so let's just escape out and we can stop. But basically that is the, uh, the the game that goes along with this 82-page uh, tutorial and 10-part uh, video tutorial series that is going to be the introduction to CryEngine. Um, definitely worth checking out. Now, once again, one of the cool things, I did a video about CryEngine 5 point something, an earlier version. This game XDK that I just showed you that we copied the uh, Flappy Bird program into, uh, it's pretty sweet. So if you want to come back in here, check out some of these other levels, some of these single play levels for a second. Uh, I'll bring up Woodland in a second to show you what I'm what I'm on to. So there's some pretty cool stuff in that example. But staying with this Flappy Birds example, remember just a couple of seconds ago when I mentioned to you that the initial reviews are not looking good? Well, why is that? Well, CryEngine just, or Crytek, made a decision that I just can't fathom on this one. So here we are, here's our main character. Uh, here's the logic behind it. So let's open up the logic and you'll see FG underscore main. Well, that's a weird name. What does FG stand for? Well, FG stands for flow graph. And what's a flow graph? Well, it's 
a flowcharty way of programming. Here, I'll go ahead and open it up. You can see it in effect. Um, it's having a bit of resolution scaling issues, it seems. So let's just zoom that guy down. Well, here it is. Uh, it, it shows up really terribly here. It's not doing well with the, uh, um, the high DPI display or how things are sampled or whatever. I'm not sure what's going wrong here, but it doesn't really matter because what Flowgraph is is basically history. This is their uh, visual programming interface and it's it's the way of the past. Like literally, um, this is what CryEngine used to use as their visual programming model, but since then they've moved on. So using building your getting started example around your deprecated programming language just makes absolutely no sense. Now, they've spent a lot of time in the recent versions um, bringing in C-sharp support. So a lot of the unit user community is here for C-sharp. So it makes all kinds of sense to do the, the beginner project in C-sharp because you're going to have a ton of users using C-sharp. Behind the scenes, you can also create your game code as a um, C++ plugin. So basically, if you go back to the launcher, I don't have, oh, here it goes. If you go to create a new game in um, CryEngine, you'll see you actually have a choice between C Sharp, C++, and then Schematic. And this is what really doesn't make sense. Schematic is basically the replacement for Flowgraph. Now, it is currently tagged as a, um, so we go here tools, you'll see it's tagged as experimental, but Flowgraph is just outright the past. So I really, really, really don't understand their logic here. If you're going to do a getting started and you want to have the community come in, use the mechanism that you want your community to actually learn. So you know what? I'm not, I'm not a cry engine developer. Like I don't use this guy on a daily basis. I check back in on it every once in a while. So maybe I'm just confused here and there's a lot of people working with it, but judging by these initial responses and they're entirely flow graph, what the hell, and why the hell? And you know what, I gotta add my voice on top of that. Like, I don't understand that decision uh, on any level. So maybe someone can explain it to me. If you do know why, do let me know down in the comments below. But as far as I can tell, it's just mind-bogglingly dumb decision that they've done. It's great to see them bringing all these assets in and you're gonna get a guided tour of how the creation process works, how to you know build things, create things, and so on. But where most people seem to really be struggling with both CryEngine and with uh, Lumberyard is a lack of you know, scripting instruction. So that is probably the area that would be of most value to everybody. And they dropped the ball there as far as I can tell. So here it is quickly before I wrap things up. Um, you may have found a Flappy Birds example a little underwhelming and I don't want to sell um, CryEngine short on any means. It is an outright beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, um, game engine. It's capable of some pretty amazing results. So here you can see a more um, you know high fidelity example going on. I don't know why my speed is so slow here, so let me just crank that up. So let's get down to the dirt. So here you can see a bit more of a high quality example going on, and you can also see some pretty sweet performance going on. Uh, so by no means is this engine a slouch. It can do some absolutely amazing stuff. And this is one of those things, you know, again, Flappy Birds is sort of becoming a hello world, but I couldn't leave a CryEngine video showing you Flappy Birds. So here instead is, you know, what you get in the game SDK if you want to go through their learning materials for uh, something a little bit more advanced. Uh, this is not new, so I didn't really focus on it, but again, I didn't want to leave things out on, um, you know, a very negative note about CryEngine and a negative note with Flappy Birds as the example. So thought I'd end on something a little bit more impressive. And this is part of the game SDK that you are required to download um, for this to work. It is available in the marketplace. You head on over to the marketplace and you will find, um, it's here somewhere. Uh, basically, if I go view all, I'll be able to find it. Uh, that doesn't matter. It's here somewhere. And you'll need to download it. Like I said, it's about four gigs in size, but there's some really cool stuff in there. And you can learn that way um, and do things from behind the scenes. So if you're interested in, you know, being learning things C Sharp or C++ or Schematic, well, the getting started material doesn't there, but the, the examples are available in, in another form, as you can see from the, the asset library. 
So really, that's it. That's uh, CryEngine 5.5 preview. They got a struggle on their hands. You know, like there's a lot of you know, going to be a whole lot of comments down below. I guarantee it. Of why would I pick CryEngine? And you know what? With um, the rise of the better 3D in Godot, um, the amazing work that Unreal Engine and Unity continue to do every release, and then of course Lumberyard, which is a lot of the same um, genealogy as CryEngine. It's a hard question to answer, and where they really have to nail it is the onboarding experience. They've got to make it accessible to indie developers, and they're doing it. It's a lot easier to create a project than it used to be. The tools are a lot cleaner than they used to be. The component model is a lot nicer than it used to be. Getting out some of the legacy cruft, etc. But stop doing stupid things like using an outdated programming model in your great new examples by the way congratulations on doing that that's a smart move you're focusing in the right direction but why flow graph all right i'm ranting on that subject so i better stop now uh this is cryengine 5.5 preview let me know what you think of that in the comments down below i will talk to you all later see y'all